where will you be going for summer this year? Will you be on a beach somewhere or will you be going for something a bit more adventurous? Well, the most adventurous holiday you can have anywhere this summer, bar none, even more exciting than the Camel Trophy, is going to be the 1997 Peking to Paris Motor Challenge. One of those fortunate enough to be going on it is Lord Montague Bewley. Lord Montague, tell me more about the run. Well, the run is the 90th anniversary celebrations of the original race of 1907, which went all the way from Beijing to Paris, and won by an Italian car in Italia with Prince Borghese. And that was really an amazing adventure for the early motors. Now this is being really commemorated by about 100 cars going the same route, uh, dating from uh, sort of this date, 1915, up to 1966. Uh, there's been many attempts to recreate this run over the years. At long last, it's got going. It's going to be a wonderful adventure, and I'm really looking forward to it. Tell me why you chose this car out of, out of the many in the Motor Museum you could have taken. Well, I wanted to choose a car which was, I think, as characteristic as possible to 1907. And this is a very remarkable, really Britain's first sports car, Prince Henry Vauxhall, which did very well in the Alpine trials of, of 1912, named after Prince Henry of Prussia. And it's a car which has uh, got good down clearance, um, it's quite speedy, and quite easy to repair in a sense. It isn't like a fuel-injected Aston Martin, which I don't think the Indians at the side of the road will quite understand, but I think that the, the very clever Indian mechanics and, and people in the Far East will understand a car like this that needs repairing, but in any case, I'm taking my chief mechanic with me, so I hope I won't have to use them. I'm standing in the workshops of the National Motor Museum at Bewley, talking to Doug Hill, Chief Engineer. Doug, you must be the most envied person at Bewley, asked Lord Montague. Well, some people think so. It's a bit of a complicated job at times. Tell me, you must be really excited about the run. What's going to be the best bit for you? I don't know about excited or nervous, a bit of both, really. Um, most interesting bit for me is going to be getting this car to the finish. That's going to be my whole time occupation. You've put a lot of time and effort in on the car so far. Tell me some of the things that it need doing. Well, for a start, we've got to do 350 miles between fuel stops. So we had to fit a long-range fuel tank into it. So that had to feed into another fuel system. Uh, that meant the disposal of the air system for pressurising the fuel tanks. Uh, we had to put electric fuel tanks on, luggage rack, luggage box, a um, new set of wheels with... Um, well-based rims and uh, larger section tyres, operated the cooling system, fit a modern carburetor so it can operate at 17,600 feet, um, and make that so it's an easy changeable unit so we can run most of the time on the original unit, trip computer, alternator to operate the charging system, um, modern electric headlamp units in these headlights, shock absorbers all round, extra suspension leaves, new gears, new main shafts in the gearbox, new prop shaft, new UJs, new clutch, clutch mainspring, and just a few jobs. Not much at all, really. Does it still drive like a 1915 car? Um, I would say no, because the wheels and the suspension now make it drive like about a 1925 car. We've sort of jumped 10 years in its uh, technology just by fitting the shock absorbers, really. Of course, this isn't the first ma major tour that you've been on with, uh, with cars from the museum, is it? Tell me some of the others. Well, I suppose one of the most adventurous is across Australia, from Perth to Canberra, on, across the Nullarbor Plain. We went to Rolls Royce that time. I've driven from uh, all the way, mostly through eastern Canada, uh, round New Zealand a couple of times. So they've always been very enjoyable. I certainly wouldn't miss this one for anything. So that's the Peking to Paris. I'm ever so jealous. Look, Doug, um, if you're feeling a bit queasy on the day, I've uh, got a bit here. I could probably rustle up a few more. Are you interested? I'll give you a ring and let you know, all right. <laughs> 